Before we begin, two messages. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to, Macadamian. They delivered on time with incredible attention to detail and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. What mobile platform do companies like eBay, NBC Universal, the Los Angeles Times, Razorfish, and PayPal use to build their cross-platform native applications? Titanium by Accelerator. They aren't alone. There are now over 25,000 apps deployed by Accelerator, which has been called the Rosetta Stone of app development. And you can start now for free. Just go to www.accelerator.com for more information. Hello, everybody. This is Untether.tv, and I'm your host, Rob Woodbridge. I'm sure you know that by now. Hopefully you do. If this is your first visit, welcome. Really appreciate you stopping by. This is the place where uh, we sit down and have these great casual conversations with uh, the mobile rock stars, the folks that are changing the industry as we are living in this industry. They're pushing the boundaries. And uh, really, really happy uh, to have um, our, our next guest here. I'm just going to paint a little picture before I introduce him. Um, uh, Checking economy. We've all, you know, talked ad nauseum about uh, certain services around uh, in North America and around the world that are leveraging location and using location. And and uh, you know, I'm very public in my cry for innovation around this industry. And uh, there are a certain select companies, number of companies, I think, in the palm of your hand that are looking at location a little bit differently and looking at location as as not the the present or uh, just about stamping your location. It's about as they say, uncovering the hidden connections you miss every day. And uh, it's a really elegant way of putting it in uh, in context. And the company's name is Sonar. And I'm with Brett Martin. Brett, thank you so much for coming on and uh, and sharing the story. You're in New York City, one of the best cities in the world. Yep. This is true. It's a little gray today, but otherwise pretty nice. Well, it's it's uh, it can't be gray because, uh, and you can listen to this probably, you'll listen to this at any point in the next uh, number of years, and this statement will ring true, that uh, the Yankees clinched a uh, another postseason berth, right? It's uh, 15 out of 16 years, or, um, you know, I think in a year from now, I'll be able to say the same thing. Um, but uh, before we really dive into it, I'm really, uh, you know, I've interviewed a lot of guys from New York City, a lot of startups in New York City. What is it about New York that is uh, just it lends itself well to the mobile space and mobile startups and entrepreneurship? Is there anything that you can identify? Well, I think that the, I mean, the density, the density of people, I mean, is a huge benefit to mobile startups in New York, right? I mean, it, you know, you're just surrounded by more things for your mobile app to help you find and discover and look up and you know, more people to hang out with and, you know, more restaurants and just more and more of everything and it's closer. So yeah. uh, you have less inhibition to, you know, go do the thing that your friend's telling you to do. So, and that's really what it is. I mean, uh, it's got to be. But then you've also got, a, a, you know, a stellar cast of entrepreneurs that are floating around New York City that I don't think that maybe New York has seen before, but I certainly haven't been a part of this or seen this because, you know, every third entrepreneur that I talk to, it's uh, it's kind of evenly distributed uh, between Austin, New York, and Silicon Valley. So uh, whatever's going on, I don't know what it is, but uh, man alive, I, I, some great innovation coming out of that. And not to mention Sonar, right, in, in New York City. Yeah. I, I like to think that we're included in the great innovation coming out of New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, uh, proudly you display, uh, you know, uh, being a proud New York City company uh, on your website. And... and um, why don't we why don't we talk about what 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 sonar is did you know was i close you know has the vision changed let's let's talk about that no, I, th I think you did uh better than i do sometimes um i mean so yeah sonar is a mobile application that uncovers the hidden connections you share with people nearby it's uh the layman's terms the you know long fabled never realized dream of walking into a venue a bar popping up in your phone uh, you know, learning more about the people there, seeing someone that's interesting, and then shooting them a message. So, you know, being able to see how you're, what's relevant about us, someone across the room, and then shoot them a message is something we've been you know, dreaming about for years. And, uh, you know, Sonar is the materialization of that. 
and it and it's done. I mean, I was reading a TechCrunch article. Obviously, you you were part of uh, TechCrunch Disrupt in uh, in May in 2011 in New York. But um, they're saying in, in a not so creepy way. So maybe uh, you know it isn't it isn't mobile stalking. Uh, you know, this isn't something that uh, you know you would uh, you would. This isn't creepy, is it? Yeah. So you know the basically the way it feels is you you know you go to a conference and you open up Sonar, tell where you are, and then it says that. The guy by the door is a friend of a friend yeah. from college. The woman at the bar is a journalist that you follow on Twitter. And the girl sitting two seats down from you also likes Arcade Fire or LCD Sound System or U2 or you know the same bands as you. So I think the point is is that it, we're not surrounded by strangers. The whole yeah. point of Sonar is to show you that the people you're surrounded by are actually not so different than you and they're actually a lot like you and they share lots of things in common with you. So it's, you know, less, more should be more comfortable and less creepy than, you know, how life is right now. Exactly. It's, yeah. If you've ever stood at a bar and, uh, you know, and, um, and watched these proceed these proceedings, it's, uh, yeah, this is a lot less creepy. Um, and it's a lot less creepy than, than Facebook stalking, that's for sure. So, um, uh, you know, this is a, uh, this is a good mix between, business application and social applications like outside of business application you know did you did you look at this and 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 were you going to concentrate on one like the business application of this or the or the social side or did you just say this is about connecting people regardless if it's a business case or a social case i don't mean social yeah i mean so to, you know the whole our whole point was that it's easier to walk up and talk to someone at a at a bar than it is on the street but it's easier to talk to someone at a house party than it is at a bar. Yep. And so the whole point is that the person on the street might actually be the same person from the house party. Yeah. And you didn't know. So we try to bottle up the thousands of connections you miss every day and then put them in your pocket. Um, in terms of business versus social, you know, one of the interesting things is that we're trying to build a platform for hyper-local self-expression. And that depends on where you are and who you're hanging out with. So it's less about any one particular function and more about, you know, how, what tool do you use to tell people? There's lots of tools out there to tell people elsewhere that you're here, mm -hmm. but Sonar is about telling people here that you're here and this is what you're about and this is who you are and this is what you're looking for. So it's no different than the, you know, clothing you wear or the way you walk or who you make eye contact with yeah. or what you say. And, and, but it's just, it's facilitated through a phone. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, you know, it's when you're at a conference, maybe you want to show, you know, share your work identity or share your LinkedIn or share that you're looking to hire, you know, business development people or salespeople or marketers or developers. And when you're, you know, later that night, when you're at um, a bar, you know, you want to show off who your friends are and what you did last weekend that was so cool. Um, so, you know, in that sense, Sonar is a mobile, customizable, dynamic, you know, profile, right? Because all the web, you know, 1.0 sort of social networks were built on this idea of monolithic identity, yeah. right? And so in the real world, your identity is fluid and it changes. Well, it, it, it's such a... Um... It, really, that's the enablement of this of uh, of mobile. Is it's uh, because your identity changes at eight in the morning versus eight at night. Uh, it, it becomes very fluid, and that's that's what mobile enables, doesn't it? Yep. It's kind of like the transition. I, I love that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not the same guy at eight in the morning as I am eight at night. Well, most of the time I'm asleep at both of those times. So maybe I am the same guy. Uh, Good what, for you. Yeah. I'm an old man. Um, you 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 called this a, the you know you talked this about a, um, a hyper local expression engine, right? Is that that is where you go? So when you talk about hyper local, I mean you really a lot of conversation around um, you know social local and mobile that that solo mo I don't know why we do that but social local and mobile um, and would you this is this is kind of at the epicenter of that, isn't it? Yeah, I would say that we're at the confluence of a couple trends. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, I think we do that because the typography looks good. But uh, you know, I mean, this this is a, like I said, this is inevitable. This is something that people have been 
you know, there's 50 dead startups in this space who've tried to do stuff like this before. I mean, I can tell you why I don't think it's worked until now. Um, but, you okay, know, tell us. of all the things... No, no, wait, wait, tell us. Like, what are some of those reasons why it didn't work? Well, it didn't work because of, one, I mean, quantity, quality, right? Yeah. So quantity is how do you achieve hyperlocal density with an app like this, right? How do you... You know, make an app so that it works. So a lot of people build apps that would work great if everyone else were using them, but no one else is, yeah. so they don't work. Yeah. Right. So it's a fundamental you know, failure. Yeah. Oftentimes that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you avoid building a ghost town? Yeah. So that you know, this is different because we leverage publicly available profile information and location information that's already out there, yeah. so that even if no one else is using Sonar. You can be the only person in the world using Sonar, and it still feels like there's millions of people there for you to interact with. Yeah, because we leverage all these other networks. Um, so it never second, feels like a ghost town. Yeah, the uh, point is that we're using information about you know from other people that have said, "Oh, I'm going to this conference," or "Oh, I'm checked in at this bar," right? right. So, and then so it's about making those people relevant, right? Because you know, lots of apps well, or you can open up to chat with strangers but we're already surrounded by strangers so an app that just shows you more strangers is like it's not actually enabling any new behavior no. right so what we're doing is you know doing the second level of analysis and going deeper and saying okay who there's lots of strangers around you but who actually aren't strangers and who are relevant and who are you who would you be interested in talking to and then we you know, pull those up and show them to you. So it's it's both quantity and quality, and you need a lot of people, high a high quantity of high quality people on your platform to make it worth the user's while. I mean, I mean that's I don't know anybody who could put it any better than that, uh, Brett. Uh, I mean, it's it it's like it's almost like poetry, right? But but what uh, <laughs> you know, it is. It's from a technical perspective. Thanks, guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm also. I also go to bed at eight. So, you know, um, what what was it that that you kind of? How long has Sonar been around for? Like you, you launched at TechCrunch. Correct. We launched at TechCrunch in, in May. Um, right? May. Yep. You got it. Late May. So, uh, I mean, what was the inspiration for this? Were you were you were you kind of looking around before that? As before you went into development and before you formed the company, and, and you were saying like. You know, those companies are doing check-in, that company is doing travel logs, this company is doing this, and, and it's kind of location is being accumulated. But, but I mean, what was the inspiration for you to, to build something like Sonar? And maybe not the inspiration, because we've talked about that, but, I mean, what was, the, what, what was that cementing factor? Why, why Sonar? Well, the, I mean, I guess there's the, the seeds of it were sown based on where I grew up. So... Mm -hmm. I grew up in Ocean City, Maryland, which is a small mid-Atlantic, blue-collar beach resort town with funnel cakes and cotton candy and a boardwalk, right? And so seven months or nine months of the year, there's 7,000 full-time residents. Um, it's basically a village, yeah. right? And so I went to kindergarten through 12th, same school, same 37 school. kids in my graduating class. <laughs> and you went but, with them every year, right? All the way from there, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So three months of the year... Ocean City is the second largest city in Maryland, and it's got 500,000 people, 350,000 people in and out every week. Yeah. And so what you have is this weird combination of kibbutz and hyper-socialization yeah. where, you know, my job, I worked in a surf shop on the boardwalk, my job was to quickly make connections, find common ground with people, you know, hang, hang out with them, and then next week it would be a whole new batch of people. Yeah. So Sonar is sort of just a productization of, you know, that. It's like how do you find common ground with people quickly and, you know, quickly find interesting points of reference and things to talk about. Um, so, I, you know, I've, I've wanted to do something like this, I, I would say, for my whole life. Um, but, you know, the technology has just sort of happened, right? There's just now enough location data out there to build on top of. Yeah. And location has hit the inflection point, right? Where location is being baked in everything. to everything. So it's yeah. explicit check-ins, yes, but also lots of implicit sources of data, right? Like people are going to an event um, or someone's taking a picture and geotagging it, yeah. right? Um, so 
I guess, you know, I moved to New York from Austin about a year and a half ago. And if, you know, if you're the host at a party or you're the VC or the tech reporter, right, you know, you have plenty of inbound interest yeah. in talking to you. Yeah. But if you're the guy who moved from Austin to New York, you have to start every single conversation. Yeah. And, you know, I'm relatively extroverted, so I got through that, you, you know, and it was, but it wasn't fun. And there's lots of people way more interesting than me for whom that's a non-starter. Yeah. And so, you know, Sonar is a way for one, you know, extroverted people to get out there and find people to connect with and reach out. But it's also a way for, you know, more introverted people to also, you know, say, you know, show off who they are and, and why they're here and, and begin conversations in a slightly less, you know, forward way. I, I mean, it, it's, um, I mean, the scenarios are, are, you know, you can think of a thousand different ways to use this, but at a, at a conference, for example, you'd walk in and you could see who, who is in at the conference or, at, you know, at the hotel or whatever it is. And uh, hopefully they have an updated, up-to-date profile, um, you know, either it's a LinkedIn profile or a Facebook profile with a photo, right? Because ultimately that's how you, you bridge that gap, right? Anybody who has a question mark has a photo. Um, you you hope you rely on certain uh, completedness of the of the uh, of their profile, don't you, in order to be able to to, to communicate with them? Um, uh, is that that's the scenario, right? So, um, I mean, how do you how do you develop on that? I mean, how do you enhance that profile for somebody so that so that uh, it makes it easier for me to approach them, or it makes it easy for easier for me to find more information about them from from the comfort of my my smartphone? So. It's actually, gosh, New York's noisy. Yeah, it. So it's actually a lot, it, it sort of self-regulates, right? Because Sonar only uses publicly available profile information. Yep. Yep. So what ends up happening is the more open people are, the more information we have about them anyway. So the people that are out there already putting themselves out there across all these other platforms and channels and are you know, trying to stir up attention and you know, be found, like, they're more easily found on Sonar. And the people that are, you know, more closed with their social media presence, we have less information on them. And so, you know, they're not as visible on our platform. And people that don't want to be found at all and don't have any profiles, you know, they're not on Sonar. Yeah. And that's okay with us because Sonar is not about, you know, helping to find, finding people that don't want to be found. Sonar is about people that want to be found, that want to connect with people, having an easier way of doing it. So when I'm going to a conference, what I do is I pop open Sonar when I'm in the cab on the way there, and then you know I see the ten people there that I want to connect with, and I shoot them all messages. And then I go to the conference like normal, and I start talking to whoever I bump into. Yeah. And then throughout the course of the day, I get pings back from the people I reached out to, and then I say, yeah, you know, I'll meet you at the water cooler, or I'll meet you by the uh, front desk in five minutes. And so it's just a, it's a way to augment. The, the sort of in venue, you know, real life experience I'm already having. Yeah. I mean, it, it just sounds, you know, and I don't mean this in any other way. I mean, it sounds like this is, this is, uh, it, it sounds so perfect and so simple, right? And, and usually when, when I look at an idea, I think, you know, uh, we, we take a lot of great simple ideas and make them so complicated that they, they fail because of the complicated nature. They think, well, it should do this, it should do that. Um, I mean, how do you guys stay uh, stay grounded in the fact that listen, this is what we do? You seem to have you have a great, obviously you do a great grasp of what you do, right? Uh, of what sonar is and what it isn't, and um, and every time I try to steer you in a direction to say, well, it's something else, you say, no, no, listen, Rob, it's it's very clearly this is this is it. We leverage this kind of data and and we give you a head start in the relationship. The rest is up to you, human. Go and go and put your hand out and shake a hand. Um, how do, how do you stay contained? In, in this space, uh, you know, because there's always shiny new objects where you can get involved in, aren't there? True. And, uh, you know, I think it, it helps that before I was doing Sonar, I was working with um, AppFund, which is sort of a mobile incubator, and we were building a bunch of different mobile apps and looking at a bunch of different deals. And I sort of, you know, one of the things you realize is it's all about simplicity, particularly on mobile. It's, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And, you know, the best mobile app is a mobile app that you open it up, you press a button, and then, you know, hot chicks or money comes, <laughs> comes, you know, 
jumping out of the bushes, right? <laughs> and uh, that's sort of what we're hoping Sonar is. Right? <laughs> Hot chicks and so money jumping out of the bushes. I, we don't want it to be more complicated than that. Well, no, but you know what? How come things get complicated? Is it that the, you know the entrepreneurs just don't have an idea of of when their product should end and where it should start, or you know you watched it because you funded companies and and you watched them build apps and I mean you could probably tell them that it was too complicated, but but why do you think it goes beyond? Well, I think it's a. Like- a bunch of things, you know. I mean, people think more is better, and uh, I think also a lot of people, you know, mobile is still very nascent. So yeah. a lot of people are excused to designing for the desktop web, and they think it's just oh, you just port it, you know, to in the same app on a smaller screen, and and that doesn't work. Um, so you know, you have to design mobile first and think about how people people use phones differently than they use computers, right? So, you know, there's a lot of learning that had to, had to be done. So I think that that's it. And, you know, you need a really good designer, which uh, luckily we have. Well, I, you know, well, yeah, design is very important. But how did, how did you learn those lessons? Is it just from iteration and failure and, and attempting? Um, or did you sit back and watch some of the companies that you were, you were involved with? I mean, you just look at the most successful apps and, I mean... Like look, look at Shazam, right? Yeah. Like that is, I mean, there, it's a button. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it literally is a button, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, in Instagram, like it, its success is it's so simple, right? Like, you know, I'll, it's funny. A lot of people say that uh, Twitter is Instagram for, or Instagram is Twitter for pictures. Yeah. But I think that Twitter is Instagram for words. Yeah. Because. You know, pictures are more universally shareable than than text. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th- this is not rocket science. Do one thing and do one thing well, and it's a constant battle to avoid feature creep. And you know, I I think our app is still too complicated. You know, it's five screens total, and we think it could be three. Um, so, you know, we're just constantly trying to eliminate and remove features and, uh, you know, make more hot chicks and money. Come out of the, jump out of the bushes. I love that. You know, that, that that's what this is going to be called. Uh, you know, it's uh, that's the, the title of this segment. Um, you talk about companies like uh, like Instagram. Um, you know, the beauty is the simplicity, but but there's always a risk of kind of doing too much. Right. You know, you 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 gain success on simplicity. And then instead of doing what you're thinking about doing, which is say we've got five screens, we want to reduce it down to three. You see them saying, well, we got three screens and we have to add now. Um, You know, how do how do entrepreneurs or how do businesses stay out of that mode? Or is it is it just part of evolution? You know, you get people used to it. I I look at Foursquare and it's a complex application today. Right, where at one point it wasn't as complex, but it's many screens and and a lot of small text. Um, how do companies avoid that? Do you, uh, you know, you must have had some experience in, in trying to avoid that. Uh, I think that probably just comes down to sticking, having a core mission, and you know, you know, not deviating from that, and looking at every new feature from the perspective of like, is this really going to move the needle on that core mission? I mean, I, I think Starbucks is a really good example of a company that has a great simple product, you know, that keeps it simple for the customers, regardless of how complex things get on the back end. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it's a work in progress. I, I, I wouldn't say I have any sort of golden secrets here because, you know, I, we're constantly dreaming up new features. Um, we're just trying to make sure that they, you know, fall in line with our core mission of helping people connect uh, and, you know, make genuine real world connections. Yeah. So having that, you almost want to write or, you know, put that on the wall in big letters. And every once in a while, when you're contemplating a new feature, you look up and you make sure that it fits under that. Right. You know what it is that you're you're aiming for, Um, because I I love it because simplicity can can lead to complexity very quickly. If you start listening to customers about everything, for example. Right. Uh, You run into that issue. Um, what about, uh, have you heard any great stories about Sonar since it's launched? Like, you know, I met my wife, I met my girlfriend, uh, you know, I, I landed this deal, I did all these things. Have you heard any of those kind of stories, anecdotally or, or in reality? Oh, yeah. I mean, people, 
uh, you know, we've had his first babies found on Sonar, and uh, you know, we've definitely had people make a bunch of business, good business connections. Actually, our the first so <laughs> the first connection made on Sonar is kind of a funny anecdote. I was at New York Tech Meetup, and we had just gotten the messaging, you know, the Twitter, Twitter functionality into the app, and the first person, you know, I went to New York Tech Meetup. There was 700 people there. And I pull up, you know, the top guy on the list in Sonar, our most relevant person is, you know, a mobile developer that uh, went to Princeton and is interested in, you know, connecting people, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, this is perfect, He's right? He's the guy. So, so I, t you know, I tweeted him and I say, you know, hey, what's up? You know, we're friends of friends with uh, this, you know, my friend who I did Startup Weekend with, you know, I'd love to connect. And... He, he tweeted right back and he said, oh, that's great, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's meet. And then my phone died. <laughs> and so I was sitting there and I was like, no, like I, I, you know, this is the first connection. I, like, I need to make this work. So you know, I asked my friend on my left and he, didn't, he had a feature phone and I asked my friend on the right and he had a BlackBerry, which I spent 10 minutes trying to send a tweet login and send a tweet from, ultimately failed. And... Uh, you know, then I ended up having to turn around and talk to the people behind me and, you know, get their charger and I charged it back up and an hour later I got back on my computer <laughs> and I and I tweeted back and I'm like, you know, sorry, let's meet by the stairs. He said, Great. And so then, you know, after the show, I went back to the stairs and I met him and I was uh, you know, talking to him and I was like, Hey Jamie, you know, nice to meet you, da 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 and then my friend Blake, that one of the guys I asked for, you know, his phone walked up to me and Jamie turned to my friend Blake and said, Oh, you know, Hey, nice to, you know, nice. Good to see you. And I said, Oh, you know, how do you guys know each other? And Blake said, Oh, I was sitting right next to him. Come on. <laughs> and so as it turns out the, you know, most relevant person in that room full of 700 or 900 people was literally sitting, you know, two seats away. That's hysterical. And, and uh, and so it just shows you that, you know, there's so many connections that we're missing that we would never get to, right? And yeah. so, you know, now we don't have to just only look with our eyes, but Sonar can, you know, process all the underlying data that connects us all in the, in the background and then, you know, just serendipitously tell us, you know, hey, you might check this guy out. I see. I I, I'm uh, I'm heading to conferences. You know, I spend a lot of time at conferences, and I can't wait to uh, to actually do this. A lot of conferences in Canada recently, unfortunately, and and uh, penetration isn't as high up here because we have a small population, very small population. You know, I use it up here, and and uh, you know, there's one person at a Starbucks, you know, nine miles from here, right? And it's like, well, that's okay. I, I guess I can I can get over there, and they were there three hours ago, but. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm eager to try this out, and and um, in in a much larger conference. Um, my there's got to be a question around revenue, right? Because it's one thing to connect people; it's another thing to connect people and and figure out how to make uh, you know generate revenue off of something like this. Um, have you given thought to to the whole concept of listen? We gotta we gotta turn this into at some point. Yeah, a revenue generating company, um, or are you generating revenue, and, and how how have you how has that played out in your head, or on paper? For sure, and you know, just to address your point, like you know, when we launched, we launched knowing that Center was going to have density, you know, in Big select city. urban areas. Yeah. So you know, what what we're doing now is now that we've realized that this is a product that people want, um, you know, we're adding a lot more data to that system. So. You know, give it a couple months, but I think that uh, we'll have you know it working pretty well for you guys up north as well. Because um, yeah. it gets so, cold, man, up here it gets cold. Yeah. Cold and lonely. Yes. Um, so, with reference to how to make money, um, I mean that's it's not our top priority yeah. because you know first priority now is creating amazing experience for the user and you know understanding the user and figuring out who the power user is and you know who really wants this and when do they want to use this and you know how does this become something that people can rely on every day um, that's you know top priority yep. but you know longer term you know we I you know I like business models that are tightly knit with the product 
And so, you know, when you open up Sonar, you open up Sonar with the intent of who is here and who do I want to connect with? And that is, you know, a powerful intent. Yep. So in our mind, to, if we help people get found, if we can help you increase your local visibility, then, you know, that will be worth paying for. Yeah. So if you're at a conference and there's five people that, you know, it's worth $10 for you to get in front of, yeah. uh, then, you know, we think getting in front of them is going to be easily worth, uh, you know, easily worth $10, $20, $50. Um, so, you know, that's ultimately where we're going to go, right? We help, you know, help, help with hyper-local self-expression. And, you know, if you can augment that, uh, by paying, then that to me sounds like a natural fit for a business model. It's almost like, uh, you know, um, you could be at a conference and, uh, and there's one guy like a Dave McClure that you, everybody wants to go and talk to him. And, um, and then the bidding starts at $10, right? And then ultimately, uh, you know, it, it becomes a competitive, uh, bidding process, you know, dynamic, uh, to say, listen, um, if you really want to reach out to him, you know, that guy over there is going to willing to spend $12. Okay. So now I'm willing to spend $15 in a very hyper local, hyper fast, uh, auction for the ability to actually send Dave McClure that, that, uh, message, no guarantees, but to reach out to him. Right. So you have that kind of, um, you have that demand curve because there are those people obviously that are in demand at every conference. And, uh, and if this is a pipeline, you know, to, to not, not like a true pipeline. They still it goes through traditional channels, but you can, you can have a lot of fun with dynamic and flexible pricing around something like this. Right. I mean, we've got it AdWords for people. Yeah, you do. That's pretty. And, uh, Oh man, like even sponsored, like if I'm at a conference, why wouldn't I pay you a hundred bucks or 500 bucks to come up first in everybody's list? Even if they don't know me, right. Or just because I'm trying to, I mean, you've thought of this, right, Brad? So I'm, I'm not, I'm not telling you anything new. But um, uh, we actually, are, so on. we actually sold our first deal the day we launched. Oh, you did. We did a, yeah, we did a promotion at TechCrunch Disrupt with Media Temple. Yep. And we had, you know, Damien Selfors, CEO of Media Temple, uh, pop up on the top of everyone's list at TechCrunch Disrupt on the Wednesday. And you know, instead of saying you showed three Facebook friends, it said, hey, you know, connect with me for free hosting. Yeah. And anyone could click on Damien's profile and you know they were offering free hosting in return for five minutes of people's unvarnished feedback on their hosting experience, you know, good or bad, media temple or not, just you know, connect with Damien and he'd hook it up. And so what happened awesome. was throughout the day people were tweeting at at Damien and you know, saying, Hey, and he would respond and say, Yeah, come on over, come on over in five minutes, or come over at the end of the hour. And we basically just lined up a list of exactly who we wanted to talk about and had them walk up and talk to him about exactly what he wanted to talk about. And, you know, that was powerful. So basically we want to enable that for everyone anywhere. So I think that like uh, Robert Scoble, an influencer in, in Silicon Valley, he goes to a lot of conferences. Wouldn't it be great if he said, listen, you know, uh, I, I want to interview this type of company and target it that way so that he, he you know, he pays for that advertising so that it, this, this is, I mean, yeah, I don't think you're going to be short of opportunities to generate revenue from this, right? If, uh, if you know, if LinkedIn can generate five dollars in in-mail, right, uh, and uh, guarantee a response rate, ultimately this this is uh, this is an equivalent service to that, but in the mobile space in real time, uh, because you know they're there, right? Um, we're not, we're not uh, we're not super worried about it. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't be either. I think that uh, it's as you said. I mean, I'm I'm always cognizant of uh, I'm always, you know, I'm a revenue guy. I, I, I that's why I ask these questions. Is like you, you know, when you find a product that you like and you want to use, uh, part of the decision making process for me, anyways, not only in personal but in business, is if I'm am I going to dive into this, love the product, and then them not think about revenue, and then them disappear, which would be the worst thing to do, right? Because I, if I love a product, I want to support it. So give me a way. To, to give you money so that you guys can build a new version or you know enhance it or innovate right but i love those companies that are like no we don't need any money we don't need any money and then they look up and they said oh shit we need money and then it's too late well, 
I said we're not worried about it. Not that we're not thinking no, about it. No, no. Obviously, you're thinking about it, but but um, I, that's why I asked the question, right? I, I have to ask that question. What about companies like LinkedIn? Why why didn't they do this, right? Like this is a big company, hundred million plus users. Um, you know, they have the they have the business capacity to do this. Uh, they've they pretty much failed in mobile. Uh, but why why have they not been able to do something like this? Well. You know, I mean, LinkedIn is a great company. I, I yeah. use, I think people often underestimate how much time they spend on LinkedIn. So I love I use it. LinkedIn. I, caveat there is that I love it. I use it excessively, but, but, uh, but their mobile play, they've just missed opportunity, right? So that's what I meant by that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I use LinkedIn three or four times a day. Yeah. I use the mobile app several times a day, actually. As I'm going to a meeting, I'll look somebody up. Yeah. I think, um, you know, that said, I think that, You'll see you see with the new sonar, new version of sonar we put out uh, last week at Disrupt. You know, with LinkedIn integration, um, you know, it's really powerful to know how you're professionally connected to other people in the room. And absolutely, you know, most networking occurs offline. So you know, being able to know what everyone in the room does for their job, where they've worked and who they, and you know, who you know, who knows them is incredibly powerful. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I hope uh, LinkedIn, we, you know, we're working with them and it's been great. And, you know, I, I hope that we can, you know, work more closely with them in the future. So yeah. And, and I, I mean, I just, I say that because, you know, um, not, not being involved in LinkedIn at all, but, uh, the, the service is very valuable to me, not only from a, a networking capacity, but also from a, from a marketing capacity. And I always think, wow, if, if, if they just attacked mobile the way that they did the web, um, you know, they, they could, they could have a, a massive brand and, and be very valuable and extend their revenue reach anyways. Um, you know, just interesting because, um, you you play in all capacity, social uh, from a, a relationship basis as well as a uh, um, a business basis. What about um, go on? Sorry. Absolutely. I mean, I actually we've been likened to a mobile LinkedIn often, um, and so you know I think that that's where the business model basically comes in. Is you know would you pay to get in touch with someone else in the same place as you? Um, and but I think the reason why you know most of this. The, Social networks, the V1 social networks were built like clients, right? Uh, for their desktop web experience, not sort of mobile ground up. Right. Right. And, you know, that's what Sonar is, right? It's a ground up social network that is focused, you know, on the, you know, it's focused on the here and now. And how does, you know, technology augment the experience of people we're already interacting with? Um, so, you know, I think that. Again, it's tough for these websites that were built with this idea of, you know, new idea of identity where on the web you can be this one facet of your personality, whereas in real life you have to constantly be switching back and forth between, you know, who you are and what you project. Um, so that's, you know, it's difficult for them. You wouldn't want to show off your LinkedIn profile, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends. No, um, not most of them. Um, you know, and that's and that's really what you know. The big statement there that you keep saying is that uh, you know, from the ground up, mobile first, mobile first from the ground up, and um, and it's not about translating uh, translating what you've done on the web all the way over. And um, and uh, I, I really think that that's that's the big statement here. So when we start thinking about um, I, I just one one area that I just want to cover, which is around the marketing of this application. So. You know, I, I, I firmly believe, like, um, in, in the scope of an app, something like this, a platform, you got 10% of it is execution on the development, right? And that's a very important 10%, but kind of 90% of the effort is then spent on awareness making and cre and, uh, and building a, an audience and, and marketing this out. Um, how, how do you plan on marketing this and how do you plan on, on, on pulling in the users uh, in order to be able to make this, um, you know, a, a, a go-to app that people just use every day? Well, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, you know, in the beginning, you've got to focus on product because if the product isn't, you know, doing it for people, then it's never going to grow, right? So you have to have something, build something that people use and share. Yep. Um, and you also have to have a product that, you know, replicates itself. So, you know, a product that by virtue of using it, 
you know, we're in a good spot in the sense that by virtue of using sonar, people are connecting with other people. And so therefore other people, new people are learning about sonar. Right. So with us, that sort of virality is inherent. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, actually marketing it, I mean, we're just focusing on places and, you know, where people meet. People, you know, hang out in communal spaces like coffee shops or bars or conferences or parks, um, you know, because there's this hope that they're going to, you know, be something serendipitous is going to happen. And even if they don't even want to talk to anyone, right, it feels good to be around other people. That's just our nature. Yeah. And so, you know, any place like that, we want to be, have a presence and show people, you know, how Sonar can make their, li their lives better. So, I mean, you said a word there. It's really cool. Serendipity, right? Uh, does this enhance serendipity or do you think that it, it, it takes it away? I mean, serendipity is happenstance. Somebody's described it to me as shit luck, right? It's just uh, you're at the right place at the right time. Now, do you think that th this enhances that or do you think that it detracts from it? Oh, it absolutely enhances it. I, I think that, you know, serendipity is just something, you know, coming in and delighting you, right, that, yeah. that you did, uh, you know, a, a serendipitous, a delightful coincidence. Um, and so it's, it's not about making the experience worse. It's, it's about letting the experience happen more often, right? I'm not trying to take the magic out of it. Yeah. I'm just trying to show you, you know, where you can put yourself in more situations to have more magic happen. I love it. Um, I love it. Well, I mean, that's that's exactly, you know, going back to, to what I read right from your website at the beginning, which was, like, you know, uncovering the hidden connections you miss every day. So that's really about making magic happen more often because uh, you can pass right past people without ever, uh, without ever getting engaged with them. Um, hey, absolutely. And we're just trying to, you know, make those more connections happen. Well, listen, Brett, uh, uh, aware of your time, um, uh, I need uh, to, uh, you need to let people know how to get in touch with you guys, how to find the app. Where, where do they go? Absolutely. It's just www.sonar.me on the website. And yep. right now, you know, we're an iPhone app. We're available in the iPhone app store. Just look up Sonar and we're the, uh, we're the yellow sub. We're the yellow sub. And I've been using it, and uh, I, you know, when I'm at these conferences in the states coming up, I'm I'm absolutely going to be uh, leveraging this, and uh, I'd love to have you back on, and uh, and as you guys grow uh, and check in and see how things are going with you guys um, down the road, if you're you're good with that, Brett. Absolutely, looking forward to coming back and chatting soon. I have been speaking with uh, Brett Martin, who's the uh, co-founder and CEO of a company called Sonar. Go to sonar.me, S-O-N-A-R.me. Or just look it up on uh, on the App Store, download it, and uh, let me know what you think. Reach out to me at untetheredgmail.com. Love to hear your feedback, as I'm sure that uh, Brett would as well. And uh, I want to thank Brett for spending some time with us this afternoon. Thank you so much, Brett. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's been great. And for those of you who are watching, listening, I know that you found some great value in this. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that you do this quite often. I uh, love the fact that you watch and listen to these and, and that you're getting something from these episodes. So until the next one, that's it for this episode of untether.tv. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Brett. Take care.